Yes, so you have to start with the kind of the understanding of, of chronic pain as a disease and how it uh, leads to significant wholesale neuroplastic changes within the brain. And it's really a, an experience that takes place inside of us and all these different changes that take place lead us to this sort of chronic pain state that we're in that I, that I call the, the pain brain. And what we've come to learn is there's many different ways of, of treating chronic pain as, as a disease, but one of the really exciting ways of approaching it is through exercise, because exercise leads to um, wonderful neuroplastic changes, remodels the pain brain into something more healthier and well and, and in less pain. And so understanding the mind-body connection and how exercise leads to these great changes that sort of undo that pain state is kind of the, the, the whole basis of, of how I approach exercise. I think, you know, it's good to understand that the body was meant to move. And when our bodies are able to move, they're happy. And when we don't let them move, they become unhappy. And we start to feel, if we're in pain, we start to feel more and more pain. And I think it was the, uh, the Spanish Armada that their form of uh, torture was to keep people locked in a thing where they, where they couldn't move. Uh, so the body is happy when, when it's able to move. Um, from, a, from an exercise standpoint, you have to kind of take baby steps and start small and work your way. And you got to have some, I think, some goals of where you want to be. You have to look at the functional side, what kind of things do you want to be able to do. You have to look at the fun side, you know, what kind of movements or activities or recreations do you enjoy doing that brings happiness and joy back to you. There, there's so many things to get out of it. And then, of course, there's all the health benefits of, of exercise from cardiovascular health and blood sugar regulation and, and all those other things. Well, I believe that um, everybody needs to get on their best, healthiest path. You know, whatever is going to get that person the most healthy and well. You know, it doesn't have to be this and it doesn't have to be that. But I, you know, when I work with patients, I tell them I want you to get to your best state of optimum health and wellness. And part of that is what you put in yourself. You know, what you put into your body, whether it's the food you eat, the medications you take, the water you drink, the air you breathe. You want to put the healthiest things in possible to maximize what you're going to get out of it. So I think for people with complicated chronic pain problems, if they're able to function better and um, do well on a certain you know, medication regimen, then so be it. If they can do better without the medications, can be more active and learn other ways and other tools um, of self-management, then that's even better. And so it kind of depends on each person's situation, but I'm not anti-medication, but I'm definitely pro-health. I, I, think, I think some sort of uh, movement uh, and movement training really should be part of really any pain management program or strategy that any doctor-patient relationship would have. Uh, patients come to me sometimes and, you know, they're, they're suffering, they've been in pain, they've been injured, they want it to go away and they, they, they want to be fixed. And they spend a lot of time and energy seeing different doctors, having different treatments, doing different tests to try to fix things. It's not really that simple. The human, the human being is, not, is much more complicated than a, you know, a car or a machine where you take a part and you put a new part in, you take the old part out. Um, when we get injured or when we're hurting, that has an effect on us. And the way we, I think, best overcome it is not to try to make it completely go away or, or try to do something that's going to eliminate it or, f quote, fix it. But I think going through a process uh, of healing and overcoming uh, the injury, the pain that we have, which often has, you know, many layers to the onion. You know, there's all the emotional parts of it, all the physical parts of it, all the med medical, physiological, neurological, so many, so many layers to the onion. I want to help patients learn how to heal all those injured, hurting, suffering uh, parts into a, a healthier and thriving person. When I talk to patients, I tell them that your fear is your evil, wicked stepmother and your pain story. And that's what uh, keeps people in a box, makes them afraid to leave the house, keeps them in their room, keeps them from going to work, from going, you know, exercising, living life. And it's by overcoming the fears that we have that, that really frees us into having the life that we want. And, and certainly pain can really trap people within all kinds of fears, one of which is 
fear avoidance, which is the fear of moving and exercising and doing things. And as a practitioner, helping people work through that, I think is a two-step process. One is you have to develop their trust. You know, they have to trust you because they're anxious and scared and don't want to do, you know, things that you might be asking them to do. And I think the second thing is understand that they don't see those, those unhealthy fears, the fears that are holding them back and keeping them from moving forward and being successful and overcoming their, their pain challenges. So you have to help them see those fears, understand where the unhealthy fears lie. And once you have your little list, then you come up with your, your action plan or your strategy to very slowly work through that with baby steps. You know, I, I think, um, uh, you know, our society is, is definitely seeing a, uh, what we call a pain epidemic. Uh, we estimate about 100 million Americans are struggling with, with pain on a daily basis. Uh, why is it getting, you know, why, is the, why are the numbers getting worse and worse? Well, I think if you look at some of the changes that have taken place on us as a society, uh, we have a, a growing obesity problem, we have uh, technology which makes us more inactive, uh, a lot of our occupations are increasingly more uh, sedentary. So there's a lot of things that have changed in our society maybe in the last 10, 20, uh, 30 years that leads us to being much more inactive than maybe our, our ancestors were before us. So I think having structured time for movement, for exercise, for recreation, uh, hopefully for fun, um, I think it's an important part of uh, any patient's pain management uh, strategy. We all, we all can benefit from you know, moving more, I, I think in many cases, you know, particularly if we have very uh, sedentary uh, lifestyles. And so I think it's a great way of uh, overcoming, you know, not only the, uh, the obesity epidemic and some of the uh, health problems associated with that, but also a great way uh, of, by getting the body moving, of just relieving pain and reducing uh, the, the struggles and the suffering that, that we go through.